This is KGW News at 11. Good evening and thanks for staying up with us. I'm Brittany Falkers. Tonight we're following another night of protests as they enter their 13th week. Tonight, demonstrators are in Northeast Portland near the Portland Police Bureau's North Precinct. And just a little bit ago, police declared an unlawful assembly saying rocks and glass bottles have been thrown at officers and lasers have been used. They're warning that crowd control agents like tear gas and impact weapons could soon be used. Now, last night, things centered around the Kelly Building on East Burnside. That's home to some police offices and the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. And police declared another riot and made 14 arrests. Earlier on Saturday, though, Portland police made zero arrests as hundreds of people in opposing groups faced off and fought. Local officers, for the most part, stayed out of it. Tim Gordon got some reaction to PPB's claim they didn't have the resources to keep the peace. This is what can happen in broad daylight when right wing and left wing demonstrators meet on the street. In this case, fights broke out right in front of the Justice Center, yet Portland police were hard to find. They could have declared a riot, but never did, saying later, while the activity in the group met the definition of a riot, PPB did not declare one because there were not adequate police resources available. In fact, police say thanks to ongoing protests and other calls, they only had 30 officers on to police a situation where people were injured from violence and many from the alt-right side arrived in Portland with firearms. It, it's shocking to me that it's just this personal to them. Juan Chavez with the Oregon Justice Resource Center is not buying police explanations for inaction. He says they have a big problem with legitimacy and... They squander it every night to go out there and beat up folks. Um, and they just frankly didn't see a purpose for them to be there on Saturday afternoon when there was a fascist incursion into, into Portland from out-of-state agitators. Police say they are investigating this frightening situation where a man from the far-right demonstration points a handgun at the opposing crowd. Meanwhile, President Trump tweeted, these riots are an anti-government movement from the left that are all in Democrat-run cities. The mayors have got to let their police do what they know how to do. Would be very easy to suppress or call in the federal government. We will solve problem fast. Yeah, Chavez says it's not a Democrat or Republican issue. Every city in this country over polices and over militarizes their police forces. And, you know, frankly, President Trump already sent in his troops and they failed miserably. Although it is hard to call Saturday's lack of police presence a success, we'll never really know if things would have gotten better or worse if Portland officers moved in. And we did try and get a response and additional information from Portland police today. We got nothing. We also got nothing from the mayor's office or the governor's office for that matter. Tim Gordon, KGW News. And as Tim mentioned right there, we did reach out to police this morning and we just got a response a few minutes ago. Sergeant Kevin Allen with the Bureau says they've had to shift their resources to the evenings to help cover those demonstrations. Activism threw art on full display today outside Portland City Hall. Artists installed this massive sculpture urging leaders to defund the Poli Portland Police Bureau. The work echoes demands from many in the community who want to redistribute a minimum of $50 million from PPB to community-centered programs that serve black, indigenous, and POC Portlanders. A local man is recovering today and speaking out after being attacked at an event to recall Governor Kate Brown. It happened yesterday in Happy Valley. According to witnesses, this guy you see here pushed and punched Harlan Wright, who was part of the recall group until he fell. Wright's nose was broken. He needed seven stitches in his chin and another seven in the back of his head. He says he was at the rally because he's angry about the lack of leadership in the state, especially when it comes to continued violence in downtown Portland. He's worried about a lack of accountability. But there's a group of people that are saying that we all have to be the same. We have to believe the same, that we have to be with them. And uh, if we're not with them, we're against them. And that is just totally wrong. We, we still have to work in our society together and we have to still be able to agree to disagree and move on. 
Clackamas County Sheriff's deputies have identified the suspect as this man, 39 year old Joshua Thompson of Damascus. Thompson reportedly told deputies he confronted the group because in his opinion, they should be working to recall President Trump, not Governor Brown. He's facing assault and disorderly conduct charges. A Wyoming man is now in custody after an hours long standoff near Rhododendron. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office says it started this morning when a deputy responded to a burglary call near Road 27. The suspect was reportedly armed with a spear. He threatened the deputy and ran into an unoccupied cabin. Authorities say the man then armed himself with an ax and knives and began to barricade the doors of the cabin. A SWAT team and crisis negotiators were called in. After several hours, they were able to get the man out of the cabin and into custody. He'll be booked on three counts of burglary and two counts of criminal mischief. Back here in Portland, police are investigating another shooting this weekend. This one happened a little before 3 o'clock this morning near Southeast 157th and Stark. Officers say they found a man shot in the leg. Now, we're not sure of his condition right now or what led up to this shooting. Anyone with information about the shooting is asked to call Portland police. The MLS's back tournament champs had a rough go for their first game back at Providence Park. The Portland Timbers shut out by the Seattle Sounders 0-3. And the stadium, not as wild as it would be on a typical game day. Crystal Kumway shows us the changes in place due to the pandemic. The Portland Timbers are back at Providence Park for the first time in five months. On Sunday evening, they took on the Seattle Sounders, and this season is looking a whole lot different than previous ones. That was at a Timbers game last year at Providence Park. And this is the first home match of the season for the Timbers in the era of COVID-19. Our fans will be there in spirit and at home cheering on, and I'm sure they'll be felt here. This season, all Timber matches at Providence Park will be played without fans. Mike Gollop with the team says that's just one of many new protocols that have been in the works for months to keep everybody safe. Everybody who's in the stadium, who's any contact with the players, have been tested multiple times a week. Everybody gets temperature checked. There's social distancing throughout the stadium. And those new rules don't just apply to home games. Depending where in the country the games are, we would go in the day before, in some cases two days before, train, spend the night. Uh, but under, under this new world we're in, we're going in day of and actually leaving the same day after the game. Despite navigating a new world, Gallup says it's good to be playing at home again. Everybody in, in, in all walks of life in their respective lives are experiencing new ways of doing things and it's no different here at Providence Park. You know, we, we long for the day to welcome fans back to the stadium whenever that might be. But in the meantime, it's, it's, it's certainly good to have the team back and games being played here, even, even though it's under a different set of circumstances. While fans can be in the stadium, at the team's and players' request, their chance will be played at Providence Park throughout all of the home games. At Providence Park, Christophe Kumwe, KGW News.